The entire family came to meet Leah at the train station. They were stunned when the beautiful young lady stepped down from the train. The wind played with the light silk skirt of her colorful dress and her long, curly, dark red hair. She held her fancy, wide-brimmed hat with an elegant white-gloved hand and a small suitcase with another. She looked around, trying to find the relatives she'd never met. She appeared so alien and exotic, like a picture from some foreign magazine. Leah didn't yet know that the stunning silk dress that fit her so wonderfully was not suitable for the place she was going to live in for the next ten years. Oh my god! Leah! You're so beautiful! You are so extravagant! The family was very excited. She looked at Daniel. His shining eyes made her pink velvet cheeks turn red. He liked her from the very first glance, but he was also confused with mixed emotions. Will she call me a freak as well, like everyone else does? He wondered. Daniel took care of Leah from the very first moment she arrived. He showed her around the town, took her to the school he was teaching at and was thrilled to demonstrate the physics laboratory that he created with his own hands. He also took Leah to an employment agency to register for work. Daniel tried his best to stay awake, but was not able to hide his sleep disorder. You must be very tired from work, she commented, watching him fighting his drowsiness. I think it's a good idea, if we just go home and you take enough rest. It won't help. Daniel decided to clear out his condition right away. Oh. It will. Trust me, if you take enough sleep. Leah, I have to tell you something about me. He interrupted her. Sure, she said with delight. I'm sick. Oh. I'm so sorry. Then we have to rush home. No. It won't help, he interrupted her again. This is different kind of illness. It's not contagious. I have a sleep disorder. I have to sleep at different times than people usually do. So, please, don't get scared. I have to sleep for 15 to 20 minutes several times during the day. That's all. It's a little bit frustrating, but when you get used to it, it's not as bad as it might seem at first. I'm getting sleepy right now. So, while we are waiting for them to call your name, I'll sleep. Oh. Sure. He was sleeping right next to Leah, and she took this opportunity to study his face and enjoy every second of it. He was a dream come true. She carried his picture for the last four weeks during her trip to the Far East. She dreamed about him, and here he was, sleeping right next to her. His sister, Inna, told her the previous night that he was a very popular singer. He actually had fans. It seemed so amazing to Leah. He was so smart, a teacher. Daniel opened his eyes. She was still there, smiling at him. There was no mockery or disappointment on her face, and no blame or regret in her voice. Her eyes shined with respect and adoration. Daniel would never let her go. Leah was a very nice girl, yet young and naive. She didn't understand Daniel's tragic situation, but she would soon find out though not soon enough to prevent something she was about to do. Daniel was in love. It was impossible not to be. Leah was so gorgeous that only Raphael's brush would be able to express her beauty. Daniel didn't want to wait for too long, being afraid to lose her, and opened up his heart. Leah was in love with Daniel too. She'd never had a boyfriend before. Nobody ever cared about her or spent so much time with her. Nobody ever kissed her and told her about love with such passion. Nobody ever read beautiful poems and sang so beautifully to her. Daniel did it all. She was thrilled that this beautiful, young, educated, and talented man dedicated all his time to her. In the two weeks after Leah arrived to the Far East, they got married. The two-story building had a long, dark corridor with one dim electric bulb, black walls, and ceiling, and twenty doors on each floor. A tiny oil stove and a bucket with a human waist, covered with a lid, stood at every door. Every door was an entrance into a small room that was occupied by one family. There was no kitchen or bathroom in the building. Therefore, families cooked their meals using these oil stoves, and the burning oil caused the corridor ceiling, walls, and doors to become black. 
The tenants washed the corridor twice a year, before the October and May national holidays, but after the holidays, in a few days, they turned black again. The toilet was outside the building and was only used from late spring to early autumn. During the winter months, people either used the toilets at their jobs, or otherwise, they collected the waste in waste bins and emptied them once a day. The floor was made out of curved wood planks that allowed the outside chilly air into the room, causing everyone's feet to nearly freeze. These rooms were always cold. The Board of Education assigned one of these rooms to Daniel, right before his marriage. Sarah was happy that Daniel finally had his own room. Now, she could get rid of her mother-in-law, sending her to live with Daniel and Leah. Reva moved into Daniel's room, before the young couple did. She didn't like Leah very much, because Leah bore a resemblance to her father, and in turn, to her grandfather, Isaac. Once again, Isaac's eyes looked from the young beautiful face, intruding into Reva's mind, and Isaac's smile radiated from Leah's lips, tearing Reva's heart apart. The small room could hardly fit the two beds and a drawer. Daniel and Leah slept next to Reva on the night of their wedding. Daniel didn't mind because he lived with his parents all his life and heard the sound of love so many times. It was only natural to him. He didn't even try to control his temper. Leah was his dream come true, and her body's fresh aroma drove him crazy. However, Leah came from a different world. She was too naive and her discovery of her responsibilities as a wife left her feeling stressed. She was extremely uncomfortable and terribly embarrassed. Everything happened so quickly. She didn't even have enough time to enjoy the first kiss, and he was already touching her private places, as his grandma, pretending being asleep, was right next to them. His strong hands were all over her, but they didn't make her feel good, and instead, repelled her body. Reva heard the sound of love that was similar to her own story, which disappeared a long time ago, to the sound of the gang whips. The memory irritated her, instead of warming her up. Every time the young couple made a noise, Reva uttered a sigh and turned to the other side. Don't argue with your husband, she commented sarcastically, in the morning. Give him what he wants, and sleep. I couldn't sleep all night, because of you. She felt satisfied, looking at Leah's upset face. This embarrassment went on for a month. Daniel was in love, and Leah was desperate. Daniel wanted to be with Leah all the time, yet Leah wanted to run away. He continually looked at her face, trying to find a spark of love. She was avoiding his glance, being too traumatized to tell him the reason. She loosened up sometimes, when Reva wasn't around, and the young couple enjoyed the time alone, but when Reva came into the room, Leah began to tense up and pull away from her husband in shame. Their hugging, petting, and kissing irritated Reva so much that she finally lost control. She ran out of the room into the corridor, slamming the door. The only thing they do all day long is kiss. She yelled as loud as she could, trying to get all the neighbors' attention. It worked. They looked out of their doors with curiosity and mocking smiles, and then discussed the young couple's inappropriate behavior. With the passing years, Reva turned into a typical Soviet woman, whose business was everyone's business, and everyone's business was hers. Reva hated the system, but was a part of it. Leah cried, hiding her green eyes from Daniel and the neighbors, who tried to peek inside the room with interest, and Daniel finally realized the reason for her strange behavior. Grandma, gather your things, I'm taking you back to my parents' house. He didn't know, and cared less, that this was the worst punishment he could make for his grandmother. Reva didn't move. Grandma, did you hear what I just said? Gather your things. Daniel, let me stay with you, please. Irritation suddenly disappeared. She became quiet. No. You have to go back. You don't have to send me away, Daniel. You know I love you. I do appreciate your love, Granny, but enough is enough. You are going back to my parents' house. Daniel, if you let me stay, I'll make you rich, very rich. I'll give you a fortune. Daniel looked at his grandmother with surprise. He knew she was different, but not that different. However, he was not interested in any fortune she offered him. 
He already had his own fortune, his beautiful wife, and that was all he wanted in his life. I have enough from you already, Granny. Give whatever you have to my parents. They need it more than I do. They have three children and a cow to feed. Sarah was very upset with her son, not only did he refuse his grandmother to live with him, but he no longer provided any financial help. However, she was afraid to confront her son, and therefore directed all of her distress to his wife. I don't understand how your mother let you go to the Far East practically naked. Isn't it obvious that that silk dress is not suitable for this climate? She treated you like a princess, but there is no place for a princess here. Now Daniel has to spend all his money on your clothes. I thought he would help me, but he can't. Leah stopped visiting her aunt, and was very lonely. However, Sarah didn't benefit from blaming her daughter-in-law. She forgot that, a long time ago, her future mother-in-law refused her, and she did the same to her daughter-in-law. Leah wasn't prepared for life in the Far East, but Daniel took care of his young, beautiful wife, without thinking twice. He loved and respected her. She was the only person in a whole world who loved him back, who never blamed him for his rare health condition. He bought her the necessary clothes and shoes. They weren't as attractive as what she used to wearing, but they were warm. Nine months later, a new baby girl, Bella, joined the family. Leah hoped that this little baby would bring the family together again. She expected that her in-laws would greet the newborn baby girl and her in turn, but nobody came to congratulate them. Leah hoped that somebody would come and teach her how to take care of the baby, but nobody did. She and her baby were ignored. Only then did Leah learn how terribly sick her husband was. He was not able to help his wife with the baby after the labor. It was dangerous to leave the baby in his hands because he could drop her while falling asleep, and it was unsafe to ask him to cook or make a fire because his condition could lead to serious accidents. However, Leah never complained, taking one challenge after another. She had her own baby girl, so sweet and adorable, that the entire world was insignificant when this little baby smiled at her. The life was beautiful, but not for too long. Bella was eight weeks old and suddenly stopped eating, even though Leah had enough milk. Leah was trying to feed her for the entire day, but the baby just cried. She took her to a doctor. Don't worry, mom. She's doing just fine, the doctor said, and Leah took Bella home. Nevertheless, she came back to the doctor in two days. Bella had lost weight. To her distress, the doctor couldn't find anything wrong with the baby. What do you eat? He asked. I eat normally, nothing special. The only thing is. Doctor, I missed my period. I might be pregnant. I'm not sure if it matters. Of course it does. That's why she doesn't want your milk. It's spoiled. So, what do I have to do? Try to mix regular milk with water, 50-50, add one teaspoon of sugar, and she'll be fine. I already tried. She doesn't want it. Leah cried. The baby weakened so badly that she couldn't even cry too loud, and instead, just squawked faintly. We have to keep your baby in the hospital, the doctor said. However, he was not able to help. He stuck a needle into a vein in Bella's little head and gave her drops of glucose to keep her alive, but life melted away from her little body in minutes. Leah helplessly watched the doctor's procedures, not knowing what to do or how to help. The baby didn't hold her head anymore, and her little hands and legs were lying motionless on the small crib. You'd better do something about your pregnancy, or your baby will die, the nurse whispered into Leah's ear. I told the doctor that I need an abortion but he said it's illegal, Leah cried. Please, help me. I don't know what to do. The nurse poked a piece of paper into Leah's hand. Don't expose me. Oh, I won't. Thank you so much, she whispered. In a couple of hours, she was back to the hospital, bleeding. The same doctor that examined her before interrogated her now. Who did it to you? Nobody. I was probably just too nervous about my baby, Leah lied. Don't lie to me, young lady. This is not how it happens, when you have a miscarriage. I did it myself. I have to feed my baby. Please help me, she cried. 
We are going to help you until you tell us who did it. I told you, I did it myself. You couldn't have done it yourself. Whoever did it has to go to prison. If you don't tell us who it was, you'll go to prison. Leah didn't answer. She was bleeding terribly and felt as if life was leaving her body. You have to tell us who terminated your pregnancy. The doctor kept interrogating her. If you do, we'll help you and you'll be able to help your baby. If you don't, you'll bleed to death and your baby will die too. I did it myself. Leah cried. She closed her eyes, pretending to be unconscious. It worked. The doctor got scared, he was afraid to lose her and took her into the operating room. She was out cold due to the terrible pain from the operations that were performed on her without painkillers. She didn't have to pretend about being unconscious anymore. Leah opened her eyes. The nurse was smiling at her, you did well. I was afraid you'd confess. They just frightened you. Don't worry, they won't question you again. Where is my baby? Your baby is still alive. You have to try to feed her. I'll bring you your baby. The nurse removed the needle from the baby's head and brought her to Leah. The baby didn't even react. She looked like she was dead. A drop of sweet milk touched Bella's tongue and she swallowed it. Leah cried, look, she's eating. Leah squeezed her nipple again and again and drops of white life disappeared into her baby's mouth. In two days, Leah and her baby were released from the hospital. Leah told stories to Daniel about the Ukraine, his birthplace, that he'd already forgotten. One of her favorite memories was the time when she and her classmates worked at the farm the entire summer and ate as much fresh fruits and vegetables as they wanted. Daniel didn't remember if he'd ever tasted an apple or a tomato in his life. Bella condemned growing up in such a severe environment, having a very poor diet, she said with sadness. Then, we have to move to Ukraine. She needs vitamins, and we need some sun and real food too, Daniel replied. I don't know how possibly we could do this. Leah said. The government won't give us a room, and I can't ask my mother to let us live with her. There are too many people at that place already. We have to make enough money that we don't depend on anybody. What's on your mind? Leah looked at Daniel with surprise. If we work for a few years in the far north, we can make three times as much as we're making here. If we work for three years there, we will have enough money to buy a small house in Ukraine. Really? Wow. It's a great idea. Leah was up to the task and soon, they moved to the far north, to a little town in Yak.